Hi, welcome to the opening of the exemplification essay unit where I'm going to walk you through the actual handout for the essay itself and then remind you of some of those important structural things just as a preview of what we're doing in the lectures for the chapter eight. So if you see here on your content page, pattern for college writing video lectures or something very similar, then you go into the chapter here, chapter eight for exemplification. You'll have a link to this video uh, once I get it up. And then you've got these four, which is basically me going through chapter eight uh, as I've done in previous chapters. So please realize that I have modified this essay since the time that I taped these lectures for a previous semester. So if I make a reference to a prompt that is not on your instruction sheet, just realize that that's the old prompt. Um, I've got new ones and just kind of ignore those or just use those then as examples of how you might develop a topic, but not something that you could write about. I do believe the, uh, the length of the essay is also different. So the handout will look different uh, if I happen to refer to it in any of those lectures where I'm actually in the chapter itself. Um, but let's look at that. So you've got the handout right here. I've also got, um, you know, this right here. Um, if you're not in my online class and you're watching this, your setup may look different, but you still should have a link to the essay instructions. We're also going to be going back up to week three um, and looking at the uh, essay or not the essay, but the, uh, well, yes, the essay PowerPoint that we talked about how to do a basic essay. So under here, writing process, you're gonna see this uh, PowerPoint. I'm gonna be looking at that at various times to kind of remind you of some of those things because what we're doing in the exemplification essay is actually what we talked about in the writing basics uh, because it is the bread and butter essay. Every other essay is built on this type of essay and even a lot of other professional writings and academic writings that aren't just simple essays also have a lot of these, um, the layout, the, the flow of information and then how do we develop an idea. It all comes back to this type of essay. So I want to look at that uh, as well. So let us look at the handout for the essay. So the first two things are always gonna be the same. You're writing standard academic English for a college level uh, writing. You're using MLA, uh, MLA 9th edition to lay out and format your paper. The length here is two and a half pages or 750 words. That's based on MLA guidelines using Times New Roman or Calibri 12 point font. Make sure you're looking at the word count and not just the page count. So in case somehow you got off on one of those uh, formatting things, you're still going to see that you have enough uh, words. And again, if you're using Word, you can see right down here, you're going to see the word count. If you're using Achieve to write your paper only, then there's also a web counter, uh, a word counter in that as well. So you don't have to sit there and count words. Um, you can uh, use one of these. Limitations, you can't use a previous topic that you've addressed. So if you talked about cooking or something about your family in particular, you can't re repeat that topic. The prompts are quite generous, though, in terms of being real flexible. So just don't write about something you've already written about. Again, you're writing an exemplification essay. So if you turn in something that is an exemplification essay, you're not gonna pass the paper because you've not met those guidelines for developing the essay in this particular style. So make sure that you're following those rules. And to help you, I've given you a basic breakdown of how the essay should flow, all of the parts that should be in the essay and in the order that they should be in to meet the exemplification essay. All right, so we're gonna start off like we did before. Attention Getter opens our essay, and that is based on who your reader is and what your purpose is, right? That's gonna help you pick the best attention getter. You've already got your thesis, right? Your thesis is the first thing you'll have written, so you're gonna know that before you start writing your essay. Again, your thesis may change, you can tweak it, but again, if you don't know what your thesis is, you're not writing an essay, because everything has to be about that thesis. So the background information has to then be determined by what am I trying to prove to them in the thesis? And I've got to give them then the background information that helps set that up. So that's going to be a, something that depends on who your audience is and what you're trying to prove, right? Basically, a lot of times the background information kind of tells us how did we get in this situation? What is going on in the world or in this particular group or whatever that has led to this conflict, this problem that my thesis is going to offer a solution or some kind of explanation about? So that's how we do that. And again, your thesis is going to be that one sentence. So we're going to look here at that section of the uh, PowerPoint. Remember, there is a nice little section that tells you, right, it's the overall point. It has two components, the subject and the attitude. 
Um, the subject tells us what the essay is about. The attitude tells us what are you going to argue about or inform us about. Now, all of the prompts for the exemplification essay are generally persuasive in nature. So you're not just going to inform. You're actually going to be trying to convince your reader about something there, right? And then again, we you can go back and review this handout um, part of this. We've already been through, so you can watch those videos again. I'm not going to redo this. You can go back there. But again, I just want to remind you that there are these videos available. This is just a PowerPoint. You can watch the video of me explaining the PowerPoint that walks you through how to write a thesis uh, and all those things. Okay. So let me get out of this. All right. Go back to the handout. So you've got three body paragraphs that are each going to follow this structure as well. So the thesis, you've got to prove it. Well, how do you prove it? Well, you find three reasons to support whatever it is that you're arguing. And those reasons then become the topic sentences that lead off each body paragraph. So you've got to have one specific sentence. It should be fairly short that basically tells your reader what the paragraph is going to be about. And that has to clearly support your thesis. You're going to follow that up then with explanations and examples as an exemplification essay. And here, notice that you have to have one to two specific examples to illustrate the reason. So what does that mean? Well, if you remember back here on the assignment of the PowerPoint, I have some special slides, right, starting on slide 35, that talks about examples. So let's just briefly review this. Again, you can go to that PowerPoint video and, uh, and watch it again. So examples explain in a, in a different way, right? You have the explanation that kind of tells us what your thought process is, but the examples then provide real concrete evidence to really show us what it means, right? So again, it helps make abstract ideas more concrete. So there are three types of examples. There's a typical example as something that usually happens. In general, this is the way something goes, right? The problem with this is that, well, the strength is that it shows that there's a pattern of behavior. The weakness is that it doesn't give specific information, so people might find it too generic or might think that it doesn't apply to them. So then you've got specific examples, which are here is the date, a time, a person, a place, right? This really happened. So typical shows the pattern of behavior, what generally happens. Specific is an actual example of something that really did happen. Right now, again, the weakness here is that it only ha shows what happened at to one person at one place at one time. So somebody might say, oh, well, yeah, but that wouldn't happen here. That happens there that one time. Right. They might be able to dismiss it as a one off. Right. That's why sometimes you need more than one example and why sometimes you need to set it up by saying this is what typically happens. Right. And the last one is hypothetical. Uh, again, that's when you don't have a specific example. You're trying to prove that something did happen or will happen. And so you use hypothetical examples. So I've got now um, some examples that show how these three would differ based on how you would write about it, right? So again, you can go there and look there to show how to do it. Now, I think the best way to do it when you're developing your paragraph, right, is to set up the typical pattern of what happens and then give us some specific examples after that. Because then that shows, you know, that you're not just talking about a one-off. This is a problem that goes on consistently, right? Unless you're writing a paper that only is about a specific example or a specific incident, right? Then this is usually how you want to do that, right? So in academic writing, it says we rely on objective evidence that which, uh, that which we can verify outside of the writer's word for it, right? So again, you're not writing in this essay about your own personal experiences so much as that you're having to talk about in general what happens to other people, third person, right? Um, so it says if you use something from your own experience, but you've not provided your own authority or your ethos, then writers are not going to necessarily, readers are not going to necessarily believe you, right? So this is where we want to go to experts, or we want to find evidence that's common knowledge that readers can then understand and consider credible, right? So again, they just won't take your word for it. So examples provide that evidence, right? Um, it references to the literature outside itself to show us where in the text you see this played out. Uh, if you're writing about a particular story or something, right? Um, some examples will only ask you to work with primary sources. That means like um, 
if you're like doing a literary analysis or if you're reading an article, people will only want some things from that, but other times they'll want you to find examples outside of that, right? So again, uh, here we're not writing a traditional research paper, but certainly you can use information from outside sources to help you back up your, uh, your point, right? Yeah. And it's not, okay. So again, you can go back and look at that PowerPoint in the video that I made over it if you want more in-depth explanation. So let's go back to our assignment. So again, middle part of this, you're going to give us those examples. Now, how many do you need? One to two is necessary. Um, you could give more, but you don't want to then just have so many that's all the papers as examples, right? The examples are specifics to help prove it, but they can't do everything themselves. So how do you discern, determine if you had enough? Well, examples have to have breadth and depth, right? So you've, you're establishing a point that you're trying to make. Breadth of examples means that you've given enough examples to cover the entire point that you're making, right? So if I say um, some people struggle uh, with stressful situations because they have had past experiences uh, or they may just not handle stress well um, in any situation, right? If that's what I'm trying to prove, then I can't just give an example of someone who doesn't react well because they have past trauma. I would also have to give an example of people who don't have past trauma, but maybe they just don't handle the stress well, right? If I only give one, but not both, then I'm not giving enough examples to cover the point that I'm trying to make. So breadth means that I've got plenty of examples that I've covered everything that I'm talking about, right? That's why you want to have a focused topic sentence. If your topic sentence is too broad, then my gosh, you might have to give 10 examples and that's just way too broad, right? The second thing is depth, right? So it's not enough to make sure I've got examples that cover the situation. I need to make sure that those examples are actually significant and relevant to the point that I'm making and the audience that I'm talking to. Right. If I'm talking about people who don't rely on don't relate to stress well, and let's say I'm talking about middle school students. Right. Um, then my examples need to be of middle school students who don't handle stress well, either because of previous trauma or they're just not good at handling stress. If I give examples of a senior citizen, then that doesn't match what I'm talking about. So it's irrelevant. Right. And then I need to make sure that in terms of depth as well that the example I have just really, really focuses on the situation that I've established. If let's say I'm talking about lockdown drills, um, you know, my niece went to a high school where they had like three lockdowns uh, in one year and it was really stressful for her. At one point, she just couldn't hardly even go to school. Um, and so if I'm giving examples, but they don't really show the depth of how this can really hurt people, then it doesn't really work, right? So depth and breadth are two uh, measures that we sh have to make sure that we've given our reader the exact kind of examples they need and we've got enough of them, right? And then again, the end of the body paragraph will analyze how all of this proves the big point that you're trying to, to show. And of course, in the conclusion, paraphrase the thesis, show how all the points you've made in the body kind of work together to prove the, the thesis itself, and then end with some kind of reflective syst, uh, statement at the end, two, three sentences, that really show readers the significance of the issue, challenges them, inspires them, whatever you need to do to get them to do stuff, right?